the book of the Acts, chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was now come, margin says, was being fulfilled. When the day of Pentecost was being fulfilled. In this very great matter of the presence and work of the Holy Spirit, we can only take one more small fragment this morning, and it arises out of this fulfillment that took place on that particular day. It ought to impress us that it was on that particular day that God decided to send the Holy Spirit. There is nothing in the Old Testament that speaks of the advent of the Holy Spirit at any given time. No word there that at a certain time the dispensation would change by the coming from heaven of the Holy Spirit to abide for the age. No word that it would be so. But there's very much in the Old Testament that is gathered into that day and that advent. God chose that day because of the deep and rich relationship of things to that particular time. And when you think of it, dear friend, it is an impressive thing how God chooses his time for things. You know, when the Lord Jesus was about to be crucified, the Jewish rulers said, not on the Passover, not on the Passover, but heaven and God said yes on the Passover. The Jewish Passover was being fulfilled, but being fulfilled in a way, in a fullness that they neither thought of nor intended. But God said, this is the time for the great Passover, transcending all others, the fulfillment of all others. Up to this time, he chose the time. He chose the time for this great dispensational change and movement coming of the Holy Spirit it was by his decision that it took place at that particular time when all these people gathered in Jerusalem 
at their feast of Pentecost, they never imagined what would happen. It had never occurred to them. They had left their far-off cities and countries, mentioned in this chapter how many of them. They never, as they set out on the journey to Jerusalem, had in mind this thing that was going to happen. For them, it was the keeping of an old Jewish festival, much rich meaning for them in history. But the Lord said, now's the time for something much more, much greater. He chose the time. Of course, we shall see why in a moment. It's like that. And we are given to understand that the Lord is choosing the time or is going to choose the time for the coming again, the Lord Jesus. And that is not a general statement, but it is said precisely that when the spirit of Antichrist has reached that point of expression where more than ever before in history there will be a bid for world dominion, then he whose right it is will come to take it. Antichrist will make the great bid for worldwide dominion gathered up into one system, whether in one head it may be. And is there not today a bigger movement in that direction than ever before? There have been many who have made that bid, but it's been more or less limited scale. But there are only two camps in this world today, really, and the battle is to break down the one, to make way for Antichrist, that is, the summing up of the dominion of this world under one head, and the Lord will say, when it reaches that point, now's the time for the right one to have it. He's appointed the day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the one whom he has appointed. God chooses his time, his day, and it's always very strategic, opportune, and full of significance. And so it says here now, when the day of Pentecost was being fulfilled, he chose that day for the coming of the Holy Spirit in person to govern this dispensation until the coming of the Lord Jesus. You know the Pentecost means 50th. Literally, it is now when the 50th day was in fulfillment, in the course of fulfillment. And that at once opens to us God's meaning in choosing this particular day. For all who know the Bible, even in a very simple way, know that that 50th day in the old economy was the day of jubilee. And the day of jubilee was the day when all who had been in slavery were released. All men and women who had been sold into bondage got their liberty on that day. All lands and properties which had been brought into bondage for debts and so on, had to be released on that day. You had lived on a 50th year day. 
you would have, if it was necessary, been awakened very early in the morning by a certain sun. But early on that morning as the sun broke through out of the night, the priests sounded the jubilee trumpets. The trumpets of jubilee. And they were the gospel trumpets. If gospel means good news. It was the sound of release for all captives, all prisoners, all in bondage, people and land set free, and the trumpets proclaimed release. Good tidings to the captive, the setting at liberty of them that were bound. It was a day, therefore, of great joy for the prisoners, for those who had no, no liberty. God chose that day, or the meaning that was bound up with that day, or the day of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Significant, isn't it? Indeed, that day in Jerusalem was, for many captives, a day of rejoicing. Day of liberation. The going forth over the whole world, the representatives, through representatives, look at it, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia, in Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Amphilia, Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, Sojourners from Rome. The whole world is here. The gospel trumpet proclaimed in Jerusalem to the whole world as represented on that day the good news of release for the world from its bondage. How strategic God was. How apt. Fulfillment of the old conception but how much greater the fulfillment than had ever been imagined. I say again, when they came from far off Rome and Cyrene, Libya, and all these places, they never expected to hear that message which God had prepared. Now, of course, quite simple is the message for us Pentecost, the Holy Spirit having come and being here as he is represents that, just that glorious liberty for men. Glorious gospel of emancipation from bondage. When the little remnant came back from the captivity in Babylon, Chaldea, having known seventy years of bondage, the word of the Lord through his messenger was, according to the covenant without which I made with you in the land of Egypt, my spirit remaineth among you. According to the covenant in Egypt, my spirit remaineth among you. And here they are, because of the faithfulness of God to his covenant, and because of the abiding spirit of God, they're out of captivity. There's one little sidelight upon the great truth. Dear friends, I'm not sure that we appreciate our liberty in Christ sufficiently. You need to read again that letter to the Galatians in the light of Pentecost, in the light of Jubilee, our liberty in Christ. One of our most priceless possessions. 
translated not out of an earthly Egypt but out of the authority of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of His love being fulfilled then is the gospel of emancipation for all slaves for all prisoners Lord Jesus is undoubtedly in the fullness of his ministry on the day of Pentecost and I like about this he'd already said it but here it is in fulfillment he is here by the Holy Spirit in the fullness of his ministry which he said of which he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor to bind up the broken heart to set at liberty them that are bound to open the prison to the prison to proclaim oh what an unfortunate translation we have of the words the acceptable year of the Lord no the year of jubilee of our God the year of jubilee of our God year of grace the year of grace the breaking of the law which binds the prisoners and has imposed bondage upon so many the year of grace being fulfilled but another thing was here very present in the minds of all these who had gathered in Jerusalem what was it that they were there to celebrate well for them feast of Pentecost was linked with the giving of the law at Sinai they were remembering Moses going into the mount God meeting him giving him the covenant by the law to govern their lives henceforth and for them the feast of Pentecost was always closely linked with that great epoch in their history the covenant and the law sad and tragic history of broken law but the Lord knew what he meant he meant something more than tables of stone written and engraved pen and ink he had a deeper meaning and the day came when the prophet Jeremiah was caused to say as you will read in the 31st chapter of his prophecies the 31st verse it's always easy to remember the great change Jeremiah 31 31 it's an epoch the day is come saith the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel not according to the covenant which I made with them when I took them by the hand and led them but this is the covenant that I will make in those days saith the Lord I will write my laws upon their hearts and upon their minds will I write Now we need not say a lot about that because it's, it's so clear, simply clear that that is exactly what the Holy Spirit came to do. That is the fulfillment of Pentecost. You and I know it. Do we? Do we? Let me challenge every heart let me challenge old and 
young with this do you really know in experience in life Jeremiah 31 31 if you really have received the Holy Spirit which as a child of God you ought to have done you know that you are able to say I know what the Lord meant when he said that through Jeremiah I know in my own experience that part of Pentecost anyway because one of those very first things in the Christian life when we are born of the Holy Spirit is we know in ourselves without anybody having to tell us what we ought to do and what we ought not to do in a new way it's remarkable it's very remarkable things that we did without any question the way we behaved the way we used to speak perhaps dress oh in a thousand ways about which we never had a second thought before we're beginning to get some sensations some feelings about that now some question arises about that what we do where we go or where we do not go we say we have a conscience about it but it's another conscience that we never had before we did have a conscience before, but it's a new one. An altogether new set of laws never governed us until this time. Isn't it true? I know it begins in a simple way. All of us remember the first time that we had a question about something that had never been a question before. Remember it quite well? We remember that first time when within us the spirit of God put his finger upon something and raised an issue felt uncomfortable perhaps miserable something we could not altogether explain and define something that we did not feel was right we learned afterward it was a very vital matter we came to realize that the progress of our spiritual life was bound up with our giving heed to that we stayed where we were until that found an answer in our heart and all that is very true isn't it upon their hearts will I write and in their minds the inwardness of the new covenant that began on the day of Pentecost that is in Pentecost it's the day of the new covenant that's what it means to have the Holy Spirit may I say this it is a grand thing a grand thing to see lives especially if I may say so young men and young women who are in that way walking with the Lord and not having to have the law laid down by parents or preachers or other people just not having to be told coming alive to these issues and being able to say the Lord has spoken to me about that if ever anybody mentions it they'll ever say alright alright the Lord's already touched me on that matter isn't that grand that's a sure sign a sure sign of the Holy Spirit within oh for more of it oh for more of it this mighty work of the Holy Spirit on the basis of the new covenant if necessary the Holy Spirit saying thou shalt not for right if he says thou shalt not or if he says thou shalt that is the Spirit is the arbitrator <coughs> one who comes between the right and the wrong and gives his verdict in the heart in the heart Pentecost is the day of new covenant and it's not right back there so many centuries ago it's now it's now it's for the age as the Lord says 
end close with for the present Pentecost as you know and as we have recently said was the feast of the first fruits time when in the old economy the husband man went out and saw the first ripe grain gathered it into a sheaf took it home made it into two loaves two loaves and took them and laid them at the feast at the feet of the high priest the first fruits of the harvest in token of God's faithfulness of God's grace of God's disposition to be favorable of God's intention to give all that that represented and signified the token of a full inheritance taken by faith in the two loaves two loaves you know in biblical symbolism two is always the number of sufficient testimony you've got two you've got enough in the mouth of two witnesses that's enough you get two you've got sufficient to God where two or three are gathered together my name there am I sufficient basis for the Lord if two of you shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done of my father it's sufficient two loaves a sufficient testimony for well the Lord Jesus in death and resurrection and two sides his glorious redemptive activity has now gone up into the presence of God presented himself and been accepted she said to Mary as she sought to embrace him in that resurrection morning touch me not embrace me not lay not hold of me I have not yet ascended unto my father Go to my disciples and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Something happened. He presented the double testament of death and resurrection to the Father God and was accepted. But in token of all those who in him were represented and included as his full harvest. No wonder the Lord chose those out of every nation under heaven it says to be represented in Jerusalem on that day and one representing the fruit of all the nations attested by the Holy Spirit so wonderful very blessed here in a little gathering like this very little one nevertheless enough nations represented in that nation to be a token but Christ the first fruits out of every nation every tribe every tongue accepted in token of a great harvest that's a word of encouragement in a day of frustration in the nation day when it seems like limitation and curtailment but because he is there as the first fruit of all that believe the vision will be fulfilled a great multitude which no man can number out of every tribe and kingdom and time ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands that beggaring language the inexpressible fruit of Pentecost Pentecost the work of the Holy Spirit may we all be the fruit of the Spirit really be the fruit of the Spirit something 
presented to God. So, the Lord says, present your bodies. A living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual service. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing, the making anew of your mind. That is the Holy Spirit's work and business. May he have a clear way in every one of us.